Not gonna lie, but Super Mario 3D Land is kinda underrated. <laughs> yes, I know it's kinda obvious, but I wanna give you the story on why it's like that. It's the year 2011, and you have just 100% beaten Super Mario Galaxy 2, and now wonder what the next 3D Mario game will be. Lucky for you, Nintendo just released new details for an upcoming Mario game for the 3DS. Later on, when E3 2011 comes around, they finally gave us a new trailer for this game. Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now! Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest, but this was not a great trailer. It barely showed anything new, and it looked very generic. Despite not too many cool things being shown, they announced the Tanuki suit to be in the game, and people seemed to be really excited for it. My only gripe with this is that this Tanuki suit was basically the same as the bunny power-up from Mario Land 2. This is a very minor nitpick though, as the Tanuki suit is still a great power-up in this game. Another thing that was talked about was how levels will play similar to a 2D Mario game. Many people did not seem to enjoy this, and for me personally, I think it's alright. I mean, we got a taste of this with Galaxy, and those games did it great. So this one should too, right? Obviously I'm exaggerating, but we'll just talk about that later. Anyway, on to the story. Oh, looks like Hotel Mario has a new competitor. Yeah, well, it's a Mario game, you shouldn't really expect a crazy story. Although, it does show how the Tanuki leaves get all over the place, so I guess it has that. I don't see Hotel Mario having the Tanuki suit. Onto the gameplay, it's pretty basic. Mario moves the same ways you would expect, but this time it's even worse. He's slow and lost all his cool moves. I mean, yeah, it works, but so does my brain. That doesn't mean it works well. All right, so I know I was just crapping on his moveset a second ago, but I do think it works with these kind of levels. I touched on this earlier. The levels are now structured more like a 2D Mario game this time, using tropes like shrinking when you get hit, ending with a flagpole, and bringing power-ups to different levels. I really don't hate this. I actually find some of the levels to be amazing, as they feel like a platforming jungle gym. This is something the game perfects in, since all the levels feel different in structure. Some are open, but still linear. Some are just linear, and some feel completely open. I love this, as you never know what to expect when hopping into a level for the first time. On the topic of levels, we have a very linear world map. It's nothing crazy, but none of the worlds really have a theme to them, kinda like the levels in Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Anyway, each world has three star points, these being taken from the new Super Mario Bros. games. I'm really happy they included these, as even though the levels are still linear, we still get to go off the path in order to find them. I wouldn't say they're tricky to get, but I really do enjoy having things to collect in these levels. Also in these levels we have power-ups, such as the Tanuki Suit, Boomerang Flower, and Fire Flower. And to be honest, this is kinda lame. Don't get me wrong, these power-ups are amazing. It's just that it's basically it for interesting power-ups. Not to mention, you would probably just use the Tanuki suit, since it's the only power-up that truly helps you in levels, since you can fly with it. We do have this propeller box, though, and I think we should've just gotten the propeller mushroom from the new Super Mario Bros. Wii game. Cause they're basically the same thing. I know I just sound really negative there, it's just that I feel like the Tanuki suit is the only power-up I end up getting excited for, since it's the only one that actually helps me beat these levels. Looking on the brighter side, there are some new enemies with awesome designs. We got Spike Thing, Flying Thing, Blue Flying Thing, and a Rock. Yeah, I never knew the names of these guys, but hey, let's look some of them up. Draglet, that sounds dumber than the name of the game he appeared in. Speaking of Draglet, let's talk about the final boss, and yeah, I'm repeating the same garbage joke from the last video. Alright, so when you get to World 8 and beat Bowser's castle, guess what? 
crazy plot twist happens. Bowser escapes. Yeah, Nintendo keeps doing this and it never fools anyone. Well, maybe not everyone, there was probably some 8 year old who crapped his pants at that twist. But yeah, when you get to the real Bowser's Castle, it's honestly really good. You start off in the skeleton lift, and when you actually meet with Bowser, you have to climb up the castle as it's falling beneath your feet. When you get to the top, you defeat Bowser, save Peach, roll credits. However, Nintendo had one more trick up their sleeve. They checked Luigi's hard drive. Resulting in the game completely doubling in length with eight new worlds to play through. These are referred to as the special worlds, and these levels are remixed ones you would see in the main game, such as having a short timer, cosmic clones, or a new level in general. After the first world, you even unlock Luigi. Hey, Mario! I really like how you have to save Luigi to then be allowed to play as him. His controls are the same as they are in other games, with a higher jump and less traction. This sounds all fun and good, but to complete the game 100%, one of the requirements is to beat every level with both Mario and Luigi. This brings me to my biggest problem with 3D Land. After beating the main game, it feels so tedious. Like, you're telling me I have to beat the main game as well as the special worlds as both Mario and Luigi? I find this so annoying since the special worlds are basically just slightly altered levels you would find in the main game. This is why I actually prefer 3D World to 3D Land. It's simply because 3D World improves in places 3D Land lacks. For instance, 3D World does not get tedious as I found myself getting a little sick of land when I finished the special worlds. Despite not being the game I prefer, I still think it should be talked about more. The level design is more compact than world, so it still feels different, and the game could be played in small sessions with these quick levels. I recommend not 100% completing it, as it becomes the big reason I get tired of the game. Maybe just play the main game and collect all the star coins. Speaking of 100% beating the game, when you finally beat every level as Mario and Luigi, collect every single star coin, and reach the top of every flagpole on every single level, you are granted with this. So this is supposed to be the final hardest level in the game. Yet yeah, the title screen put up more of a challenge than this. All right, that's it. Get in there. I don't want to play with you anymore. Super Mario 3D Land. It may not be the best, but it most certainly is not the worst. It may do some things wrong, but that does not make it any more or less of the amazing game it already is.